I'm going to crack on because, as you already know, there's a warning from Kirsty about this, and it's sort of my, I get nervous at nine minutes and I get tasered at ten minutes from uh, <laughs> Kirsty. So uh, the first thing, because uh, Friday allegedly is Poets Day, uh, I'm going to read a short poem. I can't ever remember poems or jokes, so I'll have to read this one. Uh, Full many a gem of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on a desert air. Now that was written in 1750, and it's a very familiar poem, but it was at, at, in a slower time, perhaps a gentle social comment on the consequences of perhaps missing out on the capacity of us all to contribute to society. Um, and in, what I want to do is, uh, how do I make this work, Tim? Okay, there you go. Um, what I want to do is explore the idea of hidden treasure and, and the methods we have, perhaps, to make the best use of the resources, particularly ourselves, that we have around us to address some of the great challenges that face us. The, uh, this is just an image which I, it was taken, actually, believe it or not, at a Chelsea Flower Show garden, which was built by homeless people, addicts, uh, alcoholics and offenders about three years ago and won a medal. Uh, but it, the point behind this was that we've got to be slow to judge and quick to listen to the people we perhaps expect not to contribute. Uh, not contributing, perhaps people are locked up in prison. That's Dartmoor Prison on the right. Uh, that's not a prison on the left. That's actually an outstanding example of 60s, 50s architecture at the South Bank uh, Centre. That's the roof of the Queen Elizabeth Hall and the Hayward Gallery. Um, how do you take places like that, which are unexpected, and perhaps challenging, and also work with people in an unexpected way and a challenging way. Well, one of the ways is perhaps to explore what their needs are and what the needs of the environment are around them, the places we live and work, and put the pieces together. It is not rocket science, it's kind of easy, but perhaps we've forgotten some of the lessons that were uh, quoted by Thomas Gray uh, nearly 300 years ago. Uh, in this case, this is skills, employability, and working with some very challenging people to build things like this. So this is, again, the same scenes. This is uh, the roof of the South Bank Centre, Queen Elizabeth Hall. It's one of my projects about three years ago. It's now a thriving visitor attraction. It's built and managed still by homeless uh, people and uh, other people who are moving on in Southwark. Uh, the guy in the middle, that's the Chelsea uh, uh, Gold Medal Award winning flower show. Uh, a guy on, a, on his own rehabilitation process. That's the garden itself. And on the right, Dartmoor Prison. Uh, where one of many prisons we worked with, uh, I don't do so much of that anymore, where we, we use horticulture as a method of engaging people's minds and moving people on into stuff that actually meant something and into, uh, through the gates, into employment that is actually there, not just training people to be hairdressers and hoping for the best. So uh, what I've got up here is, uh, is essentially three small points about what we do. Uh, we create places worth working for and worth living for by working with the people who live there. And the idea being to approach a physical uh, regeneration, your built environment, through working with communities that actually live, work and play in those places. Um, and it's to demonstrate that you know, through informed choices, participation and, and collaboration, perhaps we can address some, we, we can perhaps not miss out on so much of the resource that we have amongst us and we can make back a better value and, and address some of the challenges that face us more efficiently. Um, this is just a, uh, an example, I guess, of, of uh, places where you, you, would, um, you, would look at, you would look at them and you think, well, actually, that's not something we can do much about. The, you know, Stoke-on-Trent, uh, which uh, not many people have gone to, not many people understand, but a great city in the middle of England with real people that live there uh, and, and you know, so, sort of policies and investment and so on has passed them by. And what I want to do is, um, I showed you the first few slides because that was an example of, of one of our programs that still runs called Growing for Life and that works with excluded communities and very tough places. But um, it's actually also a metaphor in many ways for how we can live and work and, 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 uh, and work with each other. And, and it's useful also in, in uh, projects that are actually addressing and doing something about the built environment uh, as a central part of activity. And what I wanted to do was just explore three simple ideas. Uh, within this 10 minutes, the three simple ideas are reverse engineering, comparative advantage, and the marketplace. And the marketplace perhaps in a new sort of way. 
Um, reverse engineering is taking places like this, and people who are perhaps not contributing, not, part, not able to participate for whatever reason, and doing something about it, and perhaps look at it in reverse. So what we've done recently is, is put that uh, challenge into practice, working with the Department of Work and Pensions in a variety of places around London. And this is Crystal Palace Park, um, yeah, which is bordered by five London boroughs. There's great areas of deprivation around it, but also areas of great wealth, which you, you kind of get that mix in any city, really. But rather than just embark upon an employment skills and training program, what we did was explore what's actually happening. What are the local needs? What do the local people say? What do local kids do and say when they can't get work? Uh, what are the bits that we can put in place to make to, to fill the gaps? And what do local businesses say that they need in order to prosper and move on and so on? Well, it just so happens there's a whole bunch of creative industries around Bromley and, and so on and around uh, Crystal Palace. But they can't recruit people into their work, into website design and so on and so on, filmmaking, because schools and colleges aren't training those skills. They're training hairdressers. So the... Uh, it, it actually, as I said in the beginning, that's not rocket science. You can turn that around and reverse engineer the process. So what we did and what we're doing was setting up uh, skills programs around digital arts and social media to, to use those skills as underpinning skills for a whole variety of industries, but actually to get people into work. And the programs we've run so far with people who are really quite excluded from um, employment have had 100% success. And that's the first time that's ever, ever happened with Jobs Under Plus. But it's, it's not difficult. It's actually uh, l looking at the issue, unpicking it, and working backwards, and not training and, and equipping for something that doesn't exist. Um, so new website, new Vista guide, social networks, people participating with a great place, the park itself, which was the medium for the thinking, but um, people now moving on in lives. So that's kind of reverse engineering, and as I said, that's not difficult. That's taking an issue, looking at it, and working back to find the solutions to get to a point in the future. Um, comparative advantage, a very quick example. I mentioned Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, we're working there at the moment. Uh, invited in Bama Bridgewater, who runs a pottery there, uh, who was uh, faced with having loads of really crap housing built right next to the factory. Uh, by the council on some derelict land, and a lot of Stoke is derelict. Uh, no, in, in, no internal investment, you can buy a house in Stoke for a pound. What do you do about that? The reverse engineering bit comes into play, but so also does comparative advantage. So let's stop trying to compete and in introducing you know, hard-nosed kind of uh, get-rich-quick development. Uh, of which the world is full, why don't we find novel ways to invest and novel ways to build things? Because nothing else is going to work in a place like that. So uh, conversations lead to conversations. There's some very large British uh, investment funds who are changing hundreds of billions of pounds from being invested in gilts and bonds in the city so that smart boys can millisecond trade and make lots of money for themselves. They're moving those funds over the next three to five years into UK infrastructure on condition that it matches ethical, uh, ethical values, it matches brand, and there's a social return. It's a huge new big idea. And uh, the way it works is very simple. You find a project which is compelling and useful and is actually doing something about the issues I've already described and you put simple financial instruments into place. And because no one's getting rich out of it, because no one's taking the piss with 25% development costs and all the rest of it, it leaves a huge amount of room for environmental and social return. And it's a working model. Stoke-on-Trent, we're pressing ahead, but there's already a housing scheme in Britain, Britain, no, really, Bridgewater and Somerset, uh, which is done in the same way. So this is very, very new, hot off the press and all the rest of it. I've spoken with Plymouth City Council about this, who are having a good old think. I've spoken with the university, who are a bit slow, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> the, the, um, in, fact, in fact, so slow, it's not happening. But, the, the, uh, but other, all sorts of other places around the country about this idea, because it's just a little smart way of getting people involved and finding ways in which you're not getting ripped off. There's, there's, there's actually better ways to do things by working together. Um, the third bit, I said marketplace, what we're exploring with Google and Apps Broker and other players in this field is how you can underpin this by helping people to explore each other and understand each other and share ideas and share values and resources more effectively. Yes, there's a reliance on technology and, and apps and uh, social media and so on, which, you know, kind of 
as a whole new thing, I guess, but it actually also depends upon all sorts of media by which people communicate, traditional and so on. So what we're doing at, at the moment is a very, very new idea, is how we create marketplaces around resources which aren't about city trading and so on and so on. And it's, and it's doable, it can work, it can work with emerging technologies, and we're about to launch a test pilot with um, Department for Work and Pensions about how youngsters uh, look for skills, search out each other, and find jobs that match them and their capacity. And if they haven't got the capacity, they find ways of building their capacity through social media. Very collaborative environment, very workable, but along the same lines of the stuff I've described. So those three, those three key things about re reverse engineering the seemingly impossible, bringing comparative advantage because you don't always have to compete, and seeking way, new ways of running the marketplace is what we're suggesting is quite important ideas. Uh, that's my 10 minutes. I've almost got tasered for that. But um, thank you very much. <laughs>